If I had to start over and become a data analyst today, but this time with new constraints, a full-time job, no tech degree, and barely enough energy after work to go through learning courses, here is exactly what I would do or exactly how I'd coach somebody. This is not going to be the polished dream version, but the real version of I'm tired and still trying to get hired version. Because a few weeks ago, I posted a one-hour blueprint of how I personally would break into data analytics from scratch today. And in that video, I said I build a focused crypto fintech portfolio, go all in in this niche network like crazy and hustle my way into one of the most competitive roles out there in industries. But to be clear, there's nothing wrong with this approach. If you have the time, the energy and the willingness to grind for however long it takes until you find the right company that gives you a shot, that path can absolutely work. And I've seen it work and I've actually gone through the steps of making it work. But after that video went live, I started to think more critically, not just about my path, but about my audience, about yours. Because most of you watching have full-time jobs or some of you are students, you're switching careers midstream or trying to get internships. You have families, you have responsibilities, significant others limited time, and you're just trying to get your first data analytics role. So I sat down and put myself in your shoes and asked, what is the 80-20 path, the most efficient, reputable, realistic way for someone like you to land an entry-level data analyst role or similar analyst job without burning out and getting stuck in the uncompleted courses and certifications and in action, and then the doing some action and just not hearing back and then giving up. That question shaped everything moving forward. So it made me realize you don't just need a roadmap, you need a system that actually fits your life. So what I did was I rebuilt my previous video, not for the hustler chasing the hardest path, but for the career switcher who wants to get higher faster. That said, whatever you put into this is what you're going to get out of this. Some people will move faster because they put in more time, effort, and they have the previous experience. And that's okay. For others, it might take longer. And that's okay too. Because yes, I reverse engineered what I believe is going to be the fastest and most direct route. But I don't want to create false expectations as well because the process is going to take as long as it needs to and it still takes hard work consistent effort and time sometimes more than you expected and that you hope for so if you ever feel like you're falling behind you're comparing yourself and your journey to someone else's don't and i know that's going to be hard to do but everyone's path is different into data and your journey is going to be different. Your timeline is not a scoreboard and the only thing that guarantees failure is quitting too soon. Now, jumping into this whole series, each video in this series is gonna break down one tactical step and show you how to actually do it in your shoes. And if you're new here, my name is Jeff. I've been in data analytics when I first started as a temp data entry worker 15 years ago, started out there and then eventually became the data analyst, then worked my way up, became a business analyst consultant at a Fortune 5 company where I am today. And I've helped hire analysts, rebuilt resumes, analyzed resumes, been part of the whole application process, so I know what it takes to stand out. I'm on a mission to help 10,000 people as well break into data analytics, and if that's your goal too, I want one of them to be you. So subscribe now because I'm going to try to help you every step of the way. So here's what I'm calling the epic launch system. This is going to be your complete step-by-step -step roadmap for career switchers who want to go from learning data analytics to landing a job all without burning out or wasting time on the wrong things. So when you look at this infographic, you're gonna see that there are two high leverage phases to getting hired in data. The first part is the epic part, which is going to be your build and foundational part. This is where you build the experience, the skills, and the portfolio that proves your job ready. Now, the second phase is going to be the launch phase, which is the get hired phase. This is where you're actively applying, networking, interviewing, and negotiating offers with confidence. And here is something that I've seen in my previous experience is that most people either launch too early with nothing to show and they get ghosted because they just look generic compared to everyone else, 
or they get stuck in learning mode forever, unsure of when to go live. So I built this system to fix both of those trends. And after coaching friends, reviewing as resumes, and seeing what actually gets interviews, makes people stand out when our in our side our deliberations, gets job offers, I reverse engineer what works into this roadmap to fit a real life. Not just my life being able to hustle, but just broadly apply to most people. So even if you have a full-time job and just limited time each week, this is what we're trying to optimize for and have it work for you. Now let's go into each letter and how each step builds trust and momentum so that you go from a stuck learner to confident hireable analyst. So let's go with the first phase, which is going to be this epic phase, the build phase, starting with E, which is going to be earn experience before the title. So what you're going to be doing here is you're going to start now. And here is a tough truth that most people never hear or learn. Data analyst role is not typically a true entry level role. So when I was researching entry level positions and data analyst positions in my market, the median and what I saw mostly was about two years of experience, usually ranging from one to three years of experience. And what most people that I know that came into becoming an analyst or becoming a data analyst, they what they did initially was they earned their experience in a different part of the business, then transitioned into the role from the inside, or they transitioned out once they had the, the business experience and then got it at a different company. And that's what I've seen through my research on Reddit, through scouring all of these different articles and seeing what people are posting online. This is what most people have been experiencing as well. So this is why in this first step, we need to create the experience and not get filtered out immediately. Because if you don't have this experience, you'll just be lost and your applications are going to get tossed in the trash or it's gonna get filtered out by the ATS systems. So you have to get that experience now and not wait for it. You'll learn how to use your current role and or pivot into a more data adjacent one so that you can start solving real business problems and build real resume bullets and your resume so that you are desirable inside the eyes of a hiring manager, even if your title doesn't say you're an analyst yet. Next phase that we're going to go into is P is plan your portfolio like a hiring manager. Most people build random dashboards or symbol projects, but that's not going to be you here. Here, you're going to research what hiring manager actually want and the demand inside the market. And then we're going to use that data of that initial research to design what I call a T portfolio. What this means, it's going to go wide. You're going to design it initially wide with few broad projects that go that will qualify you for the majority of the roles in your area. So you're going to research all the entry level roles of where you want to be. And then you were going to create a specialized portfolio that goes wide at first. And then we'll go deep into niche projects later that will help you stand out more for the specific roles and industries that you're going to be targeting for the majority of the ones that are open in your area. You'll use what I call the hire method to scope out your projects. And it gives a detailed breakdown that we'll break down in a future video of what a hiring manager would be looking for and would be like, this is a person that could help me immediately and is somebody that would I would want to hire. Next, we move on to I, which is going to be improve technical skills with strategic speed. So this is where you finally get to start learning the skills and the tools that we identified earlier in your research. Based on your portfolio roadmap, you're going to choose the skills that you actually need and commit to learning them. So this could be a career track on data camp for becoming a data analyst, a certification like IBM data analyst professional certificate or a custom self-study plan. What matters is that you're intentional and you stick to it and you commit to what you're learning. I'm still working through some of the other concepts inside this of how to speed that up with AI throughout your learning process, but we're going to cover those strategies in a future video and then we're going to test it with my audience with you and then I'm going to get feedback from you of what's working and what's not so that we can start speeding up learning significantly faster so that you can get past this core foundational part and piece 
and actually get to creating projects, which is the next part, which is C, create projects that prove you can do the job. Now we build. This is where you actually create a portfolio of projects that you researched earlier and you start building them and publishing them online to build your online brand and presence. You'll structure them like business use cases, not just homework assignments, and then frame them around real problems, tools, KPIs, and results, and then be able to actually present them where they're interesting. Think about this like a online dating profile that does work for you when you're when you're not even there and you're not conversing with people. They just look at your online profile. And it's like, oh, that is a person that I would want to hire and have on my team. This is the step where you show hiring managers you're already doing the work and you could be a valuable asset if you got hired and were given a chance. Now this brings us into phase two, the launch phase, which is the get hired phase. The first part of this is going to be level up your application assets. Here is where you stand out because most resumes, cover letters, portfolio pieces look and sound the same. Yours won't. Here is where you're gonna learn how to actually market yourself better than 90% of applicants. And trust me, I've seen so many applications and resumes that are boring even though the people and candidates have the skills needed. They just don't know how to market themselves. And you don't need this without a fancy job title or a bootcamp credential. I'm gonna go over how to revamp your resume, your LinkedIn cover letters with real proof from your projects and achievements from your earning experience earlier so that you can grab attention and actually get callbacks and get called in for interviews. Next, we're gonna go on to A, which is apply strategically. You're gonna get out there finally, and this is where you apply. No more just praying and spraying all your resume and your applications out there. We're still gonna be putting in the quantity, but we're still gonna be strategic about it where you have a higher chance of hearing back from all of these different places you're applying to. This is where we get tactical. You're gonna learn how to find the right jobs, tailor your applications, and launch outreach that actually opens doors, even if you don't meet 100% of the requirements. You wanna think about it as you are applying to college and you're just rounding out your application. So anything that is weak, you're gonna, you're gonna make it more impressive by making that part of your application better. Now we go on to you, which is going to be unlock hidden job opportunities. You're gonna find more jobs in this step because most jobs and the jobs that are easy to get, most people just never learn about or never learn how to actually find them. This is where we're gonna build on your existing network and then go beyond it. We're gonna show you how to connect with people that you don't know yet, build trust, and then create warm intros from cold connections. This is how you unlock opportunities before they hit job boards. And you might've seen this where a job will go up and then you'll reach out and apply and they're like, oh, we already have a candidate in mind. And I also know the different hiring managers that have done this where the referrals get priority over the external candidates. And even if the external candidate looks like a better candidate, you trust the internal referrals because they're a trusted party. They're just trusted coworkers because you know that that coworker works really hard. So you assume that they're going to put in the effort. Whether that's true or not, HR is more willing to go at bat and hire the internal candidate than the external candidate because there's a lot more variables at play. Which brings us to N, nail the interview. This is where you're gonna be memorable and then with just a few fixes of how you can just be better. I've coached so many people on how to become better at interviews and just simple tweaks makes you a lot more memorable and more confident. So we're gonna change that. This whole area is going to be that. I'm gonna show you how to stand out by telling better stories, connecting, building rapport, connecting your work to better business outcomes, and then also showing confidence even if you're nervous. We'll go over her behavioral answers. And then this isn't my specialty, but I've given technical interviews, but we'll talk about how to prep for technical interviews, walkthroughs, and then also hacks for confidence, charisma that make you un- forgettable. And then the next step is when you start getting a lot more interviews, you're going to naturally be heading into job negotiations and offer negotiations more. C is close the offer. This is where you get paid 
and not just get hired, but get paid what you're worth, or at least know how to get into this part of the phase and know how to negotiate. We'll break down how to handle salary talks, when to bring it up, what to say, how to negotiate without it being awkward. You might feel awkward, but at least you'll have a plan going into it. I'll also share proven negotiation scripts, levers that have helped people that I have given to, and re more recently, my wife add tens of thousands to their job offers, better titles, benefits, and long-term growth. Then the very last part of this, which is the H, is going to be hone your edge. This is where we have to keep improving. If you didn't get the job yet, you're not going to restart. We have to refine our edges and start adding more 1% improvements. This is going to be your edge to start making yourself more competitive against the people you're competing against. This is going to be a feedback loop here. This is where you learn how to gather intel, adjust your weakest links, and then add competitive edges like certifications, new project angles, niche project angles that go deeper, that fill in the trust gaps or gaps for you as a candidate. This is where you're going to keep improving your offer readiness as a candidate until you break through and finally get that job. And I'm breaking it down and I'm not just going to make a full hour long video like I did previously. We're going to break it down into chunks so it's easier to digest, but also show how to implement these various steps so we can go deeper into some of the some of the phases and the things that we talked about previously. It's going to be each tactical video so that you can take action without burning out or having too much information or guessing what to do next. Also, if you're just getting started and want a clear path to build your skills, DataCamp is a platform that I recommend for most beginners, especially if you want to do something structured, have less decision fatigue, and something that's easy to stick with. I've found I like DataCamp, so, and I recommend it. You can try it out completely for free if it's, and see if it fits your learning style. So no pressure, no commitment. So link in the description below, check that out. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video where we're going to break down the first step in detail, which is how to earn experience before you have the title. And until then, watch this next video and query responsibly.